Hi guys, welcome to my video, How Triathlon Works. Hi guys, my name is Bjorn Riddick. I'm a full-time triathlon coach. I live in Middleton in County Cork, and I coach people from total beginners all the way to elite. Um, welcome to my video, How Triathlon Works. Now, there's no such thing as a stupid question in triathlon or any coaching. Um, if you don't know the, the answer, you have to ask the question. And a lot of people ask me, how does triathlon work? So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to explain exactly how triathlon works. Okay guys, so first of all, there's five things, five elements that we need to talk about when it comes down to a triathlon. <clears throat> okay, so of course you have your swim, which is first. Then you have your T1, which is your transition one. Then you have your bike. Then you have your T2, which is your transition two and then you have your running. Okay, now, the triathlons are made up in a lot of different distances, different environments and stuff like that. So I'm gonna talk you through all the environments that you're gonna be coming across. Okay, so when it comes down to the swim, you can either do a pool swim, you can do a lake swim, you can do a river swim, or if you can do a sea swim. So if you are a total beginner, I would recommend looking for a pool triathlon. The pool triathlon can be either 20 meters, 25 meters, and sometimes even up to 50 meters, okay? If you're a total beginner, look for the pool triathlon. Then In the swim uh, part of the triathlon, what you would need is a tri suit. You don't need a tri suit if you're a total beginner, or maybe a pants or just swimsuit or something like that. And then in the open water triathlons, i.e. river, sea, lake, you will probably need a wetsuit. Now, some triathlons don't use the wetsuit. It all depends on the temperature of the water. When you get to your um, transition one, that's all the things that you need for going from the swim onto the bike. Okay. Okay, so you'll need your helmet, you'll need your race number, your cycling shoes, all the nutrition on your bike. Then when you are finished with your bike, you get to T2, which is your transition two. So that's when you are transitioning from your bike onto your run. So all the things that you need in your T2 is the things that you're gonna be using for running. i.e. if it's very warm, you're gonna use your hat, you're gonna, you, you're gonna have your hat in there, maybe a bottle of water, so when you get out on the run, you can have some water, and of course your trainers, okay? So make sure that the tra trainers are nice, nice and fitting. Some people use lock laces, you don't need to use it. If you do use them, have a look for a few videos. I will recommend one that I'm gonna be doing in the next couple of weeks as well. Okay, now when it comes down to the distances of the triathlons, okay, so you have your super sprint, which is a 200 meter swim, 20 kilometer bike, and a 5K run. So super sprint is there for total beginners. So tri people that's never done a triathlon before. Nine out of 10 times it's a pool triathlon, and which is you don't need a wetsuit at all for that, you know? And there's a lot more controlled environment whereby there's no currents, there's no um, spotting, there's no boys or anything like that. So secondly, you have your sprint distance triathlon, which is a 750 meter swim, 20 kilometer bike and a 5k run then you have your olympic distance triathlon which is 1.5 kilometer swim you have your 40 kilometers on the bike and a 10k run then after that you get a half ironman which is 1.9 kilometer swim 90k bike and then a half marathon which is 21.2 kilometers and then you have the big kahuna as they say which is the ironman 3.8 kilometer swim 180k bike and then a full marathon, 42.2 kilometer marathon. Then after that, you get crazy people with those Decker Ironmans. So you can get 10 Ironmans in 10 days, or you can have a continuous Decker, whereby you do all the swim for 10 Ironmans in one go, you can have rests and stuff like that. The full bike, of course, you can have rests in between as well. And then you do the full 
10 marathons. Okay, of course you can have rest in between as well. And then you can get ultra endurance triathlons, which is, there's one that I know of, it's called the Trans Am Tri Triathlon, which is you are doing a triathlon across America. Okay, now that is crazy. Um, and I wouldn't recommend that for your first triathlon. <laughs> now, a lot of people ask me, how long will it take for me to do an Ironman? How many years do I need to prepare? Um, what I would recommend you do is take a few years, be patient, take a few years of doing sprint and Olympic distance triathlon and see if you like it. Okay? If you like it and you enjoy the training, you get used to your swimming and your biking and running, you get efficient and really good technically on your swim, get nice and powerful on the bike and get efficient on the run, then you should be able to do an Ironman. Now, what I mean by getting better on the swim is make sure that you're doing the small things right. Okay, make sure you're swimming a straight line, getting the elbow up, pointing the fingers down and all these things kind of works together and be nice and efficient. You don't want to work very hard if you are swimming a long distance. You need to be nice and comfortable and efficient. It's all about keeping it efficient. When it comes down to the bike, you, you can spend a lot of time on the bike and it's very easy to get strong on the bike, which is brilliant, okay? But make sure that when you start biking, get a proper bike fit done and spend time perfecting that specific fit and make sure it's nice and comfortable. And when it comes down to the run, make sure that you are technically strong. Okay, so what I mean by technically strong is you need to make sure that the small muscles within the hips and the core and the ankles and the legs are strong to be able to take the impact of doing an, an Ironman, a distance event. So if you are from either a swimming background or a biking background or either a running background, going into triathlon will be a lot easier. When it comes down to being a total beginner, it'll take a little bit longer to progress it'll take a little bit longer to adapt because you're doing three different exercise types. Okay, so if you are from a swimming or a biking or a running background, you only really need to perfect the, the other two, uh, which will make the process a little bit easier. But just be patient, so spend time and get technically very good on the three disciplines because you do not want to get injured. Okay, what I always recommend my athletes do is to go to a physio and get a functional movement assessment done so basically what they do is they take measurements and they do flexibility testing to see if there's any imbalances within your body. So if there's any imbalances within your legs, maybe one leg is stronger than the other leg, they can give you corrective exercises to get them balanced for you to be more efficient, i.e. running or swimming or biking, okay? The last thing you want is to get injured a week before the race. And sometimes that does happen. So if you are thinking of doing your first triathlon, what I recommend you do is go onto your national governing body website. So in Ireland is Triathlon Island, in the UK it's British Triathlon, in the States is USA Triathlon, Australia, Triathlon Australia. Have a look for your national governing body website and have a look for a local race. So you do not need to travel abroad to do your first triathlon, okay? It can be a local race just down the road. Um, get in contact with your local clubs and join a club. Because if you join a club, there's a lot of people with a lot of experience that, that can help you to finish your first triathlon. So there's always people within clubs that are willing to help because they want to get as many people involved to get the atmosphere really good, okay? So sometimes what clubs do is they actually go to specific races as a club. So the whole club goes over and they go away for a weekend and that's brilliant, that's really good fun. So if you have been talking to the people in those specific clubs and you have joined the club, think of entering your first race, okay? So like I said again, you do not need to go abroad. You don't need to go very far, just do a local race, support local races, because that's what keeping the community nice and strong and keeping it nice and nice and fun, okay? And when you have entered the race, go for it and enjoy it. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about the different distances and different brands of triathlon. Okay, so the, probably the number one brand is the Ironman brand. So what they do is they have Olympic uh, half Ironmans and full Ironman races um, under the Ironman umbrella. Then you have Challenge Family, exactly the same. It's just a competitor to the Ironman brand. Then you have the ITU, which is the International Triathlon Union. So basically you have to go through your national governing body and be an elite athlete representing your country. So if you go through the whole process of representing your country, they will send you on the ITU circuit, doing specific races, accumulate points, 
and through that you can qualify for the Olympic Games. So within the ITU there's a mixed relay championships and it's going to be an Olympic uh, event as well in 2021. So basically you have a female, male, female, male and they do a mini triathlon and they tag each other and they gives basically the baton onto the next person to see what country comes out first out of four athletes. Then you have a new brand that came out it's called Super League. So it's basically short and fast racing. So they basically do short triathlons in consecutive triathlons. So you basically do a 200 meter swim, 5k bike, and maybe a, a two, one kilometer run, and you do two or three of them back to back. Very exciting. Have a look if you can, go on YouTube and have a look for some Super League racing. It's really good fun to watch because it's all out as far as you can for as long as you can. And then of course you have the Xterra brand. So basically a triathlon but off-road. So you do your swim in a lake or in the sea or whichever. Then you do your bike with a mountain bike. Okay, so single track going through bushes and stuff like that. And then you do your run, which nine out of 10 times is an off-road run, it's like a trail run. Now the equipment, what you'll need for that is, like I said, the, the mountain bike and probably trail shoes because you're gonna get mucky and you're gonna get dirty and it's loads of fun. Okay guys, so um, thank you very much for watching this video. Um, remember to like the video, subscribe and press the bell notification. So every time there's a new video that comes up, you will get a notification and I will see you hopefully soon. Thank you very much. See you later. Bye bye.